Hi guys, Russ Gosselin here, and I got a little video about uh, when you or I decide to buy a started model kit that's just been built up just a little bit. I've been doing this for a long time now, probably the last 10 years. Uh, I had a real interesting uh, idea or a romantic idea of building like restore, like restoring an old kit that someone built, painted. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to break it down, strip it, start it over, make it new. Uh, I, I was pretty successful with it. It's a lot of work. I have to say, if you want to go down that, that, that rabbit hole, you got to love this hobby with a great passion because it's a lot of work. And, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. More work than finished results. That's kind of like restoring old cars. Uh, my family, they all do that. They restore old cars from the 50s and 60s and muscle cars and stuff. And so I've kind of seen them do that through my eyes my whole life. And um, there's a lot of uh, successes and a lot of failures. Um, and I think it's very analogous to model building. So that's probably why you don't see too many people restoring completely uh, built kits. Um, but if anybody ever wants to uh, inquire about that, uh, give me a shout or send me a note. And I can sh uh, maybe make a video about it. But what I want to talk about today is just something about you're at a model show or you're at a flea market or you're on eBay, which is usually the case, and you see a kit that's been partially started or, or partially built up. And it's really cheap price, it's a nice kit, and you want it. Okay, so there's a bunch of things you might want to know before you put any money on the table. One is, um, does the seller have adequate pictures? And does the seller have any adequate knowledge of what they're trying to sell? Um, and also, do you have any knowledge of what you're ready to buy? Um, in a couple of cases, I certainly had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't ask the right questions. And when I bought the kit and it came to my home, I opened it and I realized uh, there's parts missing, things were broken, things were not list, you know, things weren't there that I assumed they were. So they ended up having to pay more money to get aftermarket stuff. Or in some cases, I never built the kit. I just resold it as parts so buyer beware um, but one the real agreeable piece of this is that you can get a model kit that relatively cheap if you're on a budget sort of like me though apparently I've been buying kits so I have to use that word budget loosely because I <laughs> this is my stash number two um, anyway let's not go there anyway we all know about the sickness of this hobby we just buy kits. Lots of them. So anyway, let's talk about this. Yeah, just get, know what you want, ask questions from the seller. If they don't have enough pictures, ask for pictures. Um, and in some cases, some of these sellers, you know, they're not model builders. They're just family members, or maybe they're trustees of an estate, or maybe a a consignment company that's taking care of it in the state of a deceased person so they just want to get rid of it so make sure sometimes they really don't know what they got and in some cases if they are a model builder they do know what they got and if they're really good people they're going to have all the right um, information listed on the eBay when you look into the actual site they're gonna have everything that it has or if it is missing something so that that's a good plus um, also, you know, in some cases, you yourself may know the model. You know, maybe it's a Tiger One, and you know a lot about Tiger One tanks. So maybe you're just looking for some parts to add to your stash. Maybe you have stuff in your stash, and you can supplement those things with this thing you want to acquire. So in some cases, it may just have what you need, and that that's something you might want to look into when you're looking into these these sales. And you also may want to have aftermarket stuff in the back of your mind, like, okay, I like this kit, but I know I'm going to get some uh, aftermarket tracks for it. So I'm not worried about whether or not it has all the tracks or not. 
So those are some things you might want to ponder as you're looking into this kit. Ultimately though, you know, the price is right and you like what you see and uh, you've liked what communication you've received from the seller. If all those things are really nice and kosher and happy, you know, go for it. Um, and in this case, what did I buy just recently? Oh. I picked up this kit. <clears throat> it's an old, uh, I don't know what the deal is. I think it's a, it's, it's a dragon kit. It's got all the signatures of dragon, but it doesn't have the dragon name. It says Karen with a K, like K-I-R-I-N, but it's a dragon kit. So it's from 1993. It's the, um, the German, uh, the grill, the SD, KFC 138-1. Um, I like this tank. I purchased one in 172 scale a couple years ago and um, now I got it in 135th scale and again when I, I got it on eBay for like under ten dollars. Nobody was bidding on it because it was listed as missing parts. And I've been eBaying used stuff for a while now that I had a good hunch that the seller may or may not know what they're selling. So I looked at all the pictures that were posted and I checked for, you know, does it have the tracks? Does it got main armament? Does it have the chassis? Does it have all the walls? And I was looking at the pictures and I'm like, it has everything there. And so my conclusion was, yeah, parts are missing from the sprues, but it's because they're connected to the chassis, which is not glued together. So. Nothing's missing, they've just been rearranged. So I got a nice kit at a reasonable, very reasonable price for our day and age on the internet universe. Um, so I was very pleased. I don't always get a kit for under 15 bucks on eBay anymore. That, that was the case maybe 15 years ago, but now those days are gone. It's, it, you still can. You're not going to get a dragon kit for that price. So you, it's tough. They're out there, but you got to spend a lot of time on eBay scrolling and searching. Um, or maybe find it through another um, vendor of some source on the internet or wherever. Um, but also model shows, you're definitely going to get kits for a good price. And again, the same principle applies. I see it all the time. If you're going to see that kit, look in the box. Open it up, look at the instructions, look at the parts. Sometimes things are missing, and sometimes sellers mislabel their products. So, again, buyer beware, and just uh, be certain of what you got. Okay, so um, I covered a lot of stuff. I hope it wasn't too overly complicated. Uh, I suppose you can always pause and take down notes. Um, one aspect, though, is, okay, it's been started. Well, that's nice, but... How much started? 50%? 20%? 10%? Ideally, you want as little started as possible. That, that's the ideal. But when you're buying start, a started up kit, you know, you don't want built, but you don't want... Yeah, you don't want built. Because in that case, you're dealing with paint stripping and breaking down the glue bonding. That's a lot of, like toxic cleanup work and it's a quite a problem and that's restoration and that's not what I am talking about today so I'm basically minimally started it's got maybe got a little bit of paint maybe if they painted it just still on the sprue that's nice uh, but ideally in my case there was no paint on it it's just been briefly assembled on the chassis and that was it most of the parts are all on the sprue which was great but um, if it is painted and you see paint in the pictures you need to ask your seller, is it acrylic or enamel? Was it brush painted or was it spray painted or airbrushed? These are key questions because if you're going to go that route, um, my suggestion though, I always, I strip my, the paint. Like I don't want to deal with, unless the model builder previously was a good painter, had some good decent skills, for the most part I'll strip it down completely and redo it myself. There's been maybe one or two cases where I'll, I've built a kit that was painted by a previous builder. Um, but yeah, when it comes down to paint stripping, you preferably want it airbrushed or rattle canned because that comes off really easy. If it's brush painted on, 
and you were a brush painter like me back in the 80s, well, we just like slapped the paint on. And so there's a lot of layers and that takes a long time to strip. Um, whether you use brake fluid or testers easy lift off paint remover, which I still use, uh, it's, a, it's a decent product, albeit toxic as hell, you need to make sure you're using good ventilation. Um, there's a couple other non-toxic materials like chameleon, I don't know if they're still being used today, uh, back in like 2005 I used it a couple times and um, it works, it does a pretty decent job. If the paint's enamel, it just it makes it harder. So I always advise if there's no paint, awesome. If there's a if there is paint, just make sure that there's only a little bit. I, I kind of steer stay clear of any kits that are pretty much all painted. It's just just a it's a lot of work. Um, so enough said on that. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to get to is just um, these are just some highlights and some tips. Just uh, cause I've been burned on probably six or seven occasions where I didn't ask the right questions. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. And so you know we end up blowing money on something that um in the end uh wasn't fruitful. And so I feel like I kind of lost out on the deal. And a lot of those kits I just resold as parts on eBay. So that's pretty much what I want to talk about on this uh episode of my channel. Let's take a look at the kit. Just uh, see what it actually what it came with. And, uh... Hey guys, so here's the uh, the kit, and um, this is pretty much all that was done by the original builder. Oops, let's see it. It's just a chassis. You got your drive wheels, your idler wheel, and this the. Um, the bogies or whatever you want to call these things with the uh, leaf springs and uh, that's it it came with uh, this stuff I had to insert it's just dry fitted on from me but some bottom stuff er, but yeah when you do buy a used kit you know in some in some case you're uh, you're a steward of the model now and um you kind of have to look at what the previous model builder, what his or her skills were like. Um, sometimes you need to improve or work around it. In this case, this builder, you know, it was basic. Nothing, nothing to complain about. There's probably a few places like the sprue gates weren't filed well or sanded, so I'll just touch up on that. There's definitely some nasty sinkholes, you know, being in a very early uh, dragon construct. Might want to fill those in, but that's it's nothing to complain about. I'm pretty pleased with it. When you do get the kit, go through the instruction sheet and try to look for any missing parts or damaged parts. Um, in this case, the only thing that's missing is a piece of artillery shell, which is negligible, don't really need it at all. I was concerned about the tracks, so I made sure the instructions call for four sprues of track. So uh, all four sprues are here, and nothing was missing. So the tracks are nice, that saves me a lot of problems. Um, and I shouldn't need any kind of aftermarket tracks at all. And this is probably where the seller got a little confused. Obviously, if you see this, you might think it's missing parts. Um, or perhaps the seller was just extremely honest and realized, damn, there might actually be missing parts. Because really, who, who's going to go through the entire parts list and see if all of this is in the box? Perhaps you or I would, but most people probably not. Um, and yeah, I mean, everything's here. we got all the, uh, the gun... The walls are all intact. Everything's nice. For a 1993 Dragon Kit, though, it's pretty sweet. Uh, I mean, yeah, you got a little bit of ejection pin marks, but nothing, nothing to complain about. Got a lot of extra parts. Typical Dragon situation for uh, other variants of this armored vehicle. All the loose parts, I make sure they're all in a nice plastic bag. And ready to go when I build the kit. Um, 
photo etch is another piece. Uh, if it does come with photo etch, make sure it uh, inquire about it. Make sure it's all complete. In this case, it's still in the plastic. Everything's good to go. Here's your main armament, and here is a shell, most likely missing. Oh no, that's not a missing piece. Oh, I'm missing nothing at all. That's actually just a part. And these were the shells. I thought this was a broken sprue, but it's not. So everything's complete that I know of. Awesome. And some seats. And here's the decals. And when you, like anybody, even if you're buying a brand new kit that's on off of eBay, I mean, decals are decals. I mean, we all know they, they, they don't survive very well. And this one, eh, it doesn't look too hot. It's got a lot of yellowing. I mean, I can bleach it. That won't be too bad, but right up in here, you probably can't see it, but it looks like it's torn. It's got some problems, so I'll bleach it and see what happens, but for the most part, I got plenty of aftermarket decals I can use. This is definitely uh, not a problem. So there's the kit. It's uh, what I would say this is a successful buy. Anytime that you're going to buy a used or started kit, it's a dice roll, it's a real crapshoot. You may or may not get what you paid for. In this case, it came out really well. And this is ideally what you want. Um, in some cases, the worst case scenario is it's actually missing stuff or some stuff's broken or the seller did not properly uh, tell you exactly what he or she was selling. So this was the whole point of my video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned a few things from this discussion. Ask me more questions. That's why we have the uh, comments section. I would be glad to answer any further questions you may have on this subject matter regarding started and used kits. But I would imagine the uh, principle applies for anything. Aircraft, cars, ships, tanks, figures, fantasy stuff. So, alright, I think I've talked enough. So I will see you guys here on YouTube. Take care and model on.